Hey, welcome back everybody, Ready Player Will here. Something a little bit different today. I figured it was about time you kind of knew who I am, how I play the game, what my background is, how extensively I involve myself in, in the amount of time I play. And uh, I kind of figure if I'm giving character reviews, I might as well throw a little bit of a resume out here. Now, obviously, I'm not going terribly in depth here and, you know, just figure at least give you some insight as to who I am. So I figured, long story short, easiest way to do this is kind of go through my guild, what I have for units, vision cards, and just kind of my approach to how I play the game, how long I play the game, etc., etc. So, that being said, let's jump into it. Uh, I am a member of Chocobo Force. Uh, absolutely fantastic guild. We are technically, uh, as of like yesterday, ranked number 10 in all of global. So, we are a, technically a top 10 uh, guild. And absolutely fantastic spot. We do a ton of theory crafting, build academies, a ton of tinkering in terms of PvP, and... PvP maximization in terms of, you know, if we're running events, how can you optimize the raids, how can you optimize the events, get the currency you need to, you know, plus five, some of the rare equipment. So, access to that guild has been monumental in de defining my knowledge of the game and also being able to, uh, you know, test things out with uh, people that are high acumen and very knowledgeable about the game as well. I'm certainly not uh, an expert. I would consider myself very well knowledgeable, but yeah, I could always use that collaboration to help. For anyone that's looking to come some of my initial stats, yeah, that's my name. I'm uh, Chocobo Force Wild Arms, in case you ever see me out there. My rank, uh, 143, so take from that what you will in terms of, you know, what I've done to like awaken units and complete things and grind and spend money in the game. And I'm a day one player. I play every single day. Um, too much <laughs> but uh yeah overall that's kind of my my guild in terms of my units figured go into this kind of quickly so in terms of units i have done a fair job at collecting every single ur and mr unit uh, i've really only awakened all of the urs though i own all of them except for agrius and all of them are basically ready to be limit broken with exception of four which i don't want to spend the orbs on uh so essentially i have them all max so I'm, I'm not really getting anything for any of these new free pulls and shards and whatnot. So, yeah, in a nutshell, like, I I have them all. I level them all. I'm able to tinker with them and play with them as they come out. I'll often test them in Arena the week they come out because that's when the unit bonus is. So, tons and tons of Arena refreshes to sort of, like, figure out the AI and tinker with how it synergizes with the team. But, uh, yeah, this is, this is the cast. I've kind of stopped the damages here. In terms of the MRs, I haven't really leveled up a bunch to 99, but I've got a couple just for the class matches. And speaking of class matches, I do, uh, I do uh, engage in them. I am technically, I think my rank in the last one was like 360. So I am in that that diamond or whatever that masters the rainbow one range. So I am competitive in that respect as well in terms of you know some manual PvP. Um, but yeah, my top three favorite units is kind of figured. Have a little fun with this. Uh, Nivlu is actually my favorite, number one. She was the first character I ever uh, both maxed the Limit Break and maxed the TMR. Now, I haven't used the TMR as much as I would have liked, but the Limit Break absolutely smacks. Fucking ridiculous how the range and the AoE and the defense break and everything. It's amazing. So she's a really fun character. To me, uh, I love her too. I haven't even used her as Time Mage that much. I've used her mostly as the Gunner sub job, and I have her with super high faith for the status effects, which has worked really well. Uh, the second character is Skahal. Uh, Coincidence that he's also a Time Mage Thunder user, but honestly, I like both these characters because there's a ton of versatility to how you can use them, where Skahal can, you know, be pure mage, staff mage, which is a little more physically tanky, time mage for more utility, so just the the theory crafting that goes behind putting these units into a comp, what their abilities do, particularly on Nivlu with the sniper, is just, to me, super engaging. I get a lot of fun, or I have a lot of fun playing with them. And third, a little more straightforward, Luartha, surprisingly. Uh, just, the, just from a statistics perspective, how high her attack is, fire element being a little niche, I've just enjoyed playing with her and just seeing how she interacts in the game, because she just creates some unique interactions, given her uh, rarity of element that you don't see fire as often, at least not until recently, and uh, Gunner's for as strong as she is, you know, this is before Winter Victoria, so Winter Victoria probably might, you know, surpass her soon. Anyway, vision cards, getting into the cards, so same concept, I have almost every single vision card uh, with all the shards necessary if they're not already maxed, with the exception of uh, the Mobius UR, Final Fantasy Mobius, and the Final Fantasy XIV ones. They were just, that's just too expensive for me. They came out at a time where there was no safety net to pull them or anything. But yeah, in terms of like vision cards, I've I've done my, <laughs> boy have I done my work to grind the gill and the stuff to invest in it to, to level them to 99. Some of them are ready to go, like for instance, Tetris Sylphid. I have all the shards to awaken it. I just 
don't want to spend the orbs because it's I don't have that many orbs still. Uh, I have invested in a bunch of the MR ones as well, which I, I also appreciate. I've kind of got more of those on this next page. I use these frequently. Uh, you, the ones that are maxed are really the ones that I use the most frequently, so you can kind of tell the left side here. But uh, yeah, so I've, I've had a ton of experience like being able to throw vision cards at different comps. Uh, seeing how it affects them. My top three favorites, which you might know from watching the reviews, number one is Fenrir. I just love this card top to bottom, in particular the uh, boost to agility, which makes it amazing to put on tanks. 10% HP, which synergizes with almost every character. Who doesn't want HP? Um, <coughs> excuse me. The um, the magic resist, like there's so many just well-rounded stats in this card. I love it. Uh, the second one, new test subjects, the same idea. Uh, unit resist, 70 dexterity, missile attack up for the party, 30% uh, AP acquisition bonus. Like, this, this card is just stacked top to bottom. Uh, does well on so many different of the missile users, all of them, really. It's it's the best card for any of them, in my opinion. And the third, kind of niche and unique, and we stumbled upon it in a Guild War a couple weeks ago, a couple months ago at this point. Uh, Fleeting Blossom Banquet. This was a really... Uh, not rare card, you just don't see it that often in PvP for like Guild Wars and stuff. You do see it in a lot of raids because then you can like boost the party's AP because that's the ability. It's 50% extra AP generated uh, in battle. So, uh, particularly on the subject of like gunners, which have some lower modifier attacks, uh, this card has been absolutely amazing for like just being able to spam abilities without the necessity of using Zizabels or the old Owen Apron. So, yeah, really, uh, really fun, a lot of fun with that card. Uh, and espers, kind of a recurring theme here. Uh, I have every single esper, and almost all of, all of them are max. At least the UR ones are. Uh, the only ones that aren't, Remu is one level off, Demon Wall is five levels, and I think my two-headed dragon's like ten levels off. I think it's level 70. But I own all the espers, and I have them all maxed. And again, for the purposes of like tinkering with their stats, the, being able to maximize the board, um, I do have a, a couple MRs fully maxed, you know, you can see Marlboro here. I also have um, the Red Chocobo close to max, Chocobo close to max, so I've done a little bit with those, but I've, you know, these shards are really expensive and hard to come by, so I've invested more of them in the UR units, but yeah, overall I've done my, my work, if you will, to try to synergize all my characters with a, up, up to six to eight espers as well, that I run them overnight and I'm, you know, uh, farm them on the stages so I can build that residence quickly. And, uh, yeah, my top three favorite espers, though. Uh, Odin, by far number one. Uh, I just love the agility on him, and I love the board. You know, uh, slash, uh, or no, human killer, slash resist, missile resist. There's a ton of versatility there. Uh, the second one, which you've seen from the reviews, Aegean is like my catch-up of all espers. Great, both on magic and physical users, because he's got a fairly average stat for both. Love the board, pierce resist, magic resist, slash attack up, like, tons of versatility. And the third, death machine, kind of a, a little, you know, weird curveball, but um, technically faster than Golem while still providing the same defensive buff. Uh, stats are similar in terms of HP and, uh, and attack. Uh, and then essentially he's a missile resist instead of pierce resist, so a little more, you know, different in where you put him. But yeah, Death Machine is hugely clutch for a bunch of different reasons. Um, so yeah, that's, that's it in a nutshell. I figured, uh, you know, the, the purpose of me doing this was really to kind of give an idea of how much time I've put into the game, given my rank, if you will. Uh, my hands-on experience with what I actually own, a lot of what I talk about isn't just like theory or things I've seen or things I've heard. Most of it is from my own tinkering and testing. Uh, what works and what doesn't work, what's most common, what's least common. And you know, I, I play at a rank where I am a, amongst the top 10 guilds. So I do a fair amount of experience in terms of seeing uh, really competitive environment. I know that's not for everybody, but from a theory crafting perspective, I've, I can at least see what works at the lower end. Like, if it works at the highest end, it'll work at the lower end, if, if that makes sense. And from an arena perspective, I, I work every single day so that I'm, I'm top 1,000 on a daily basis. I don't usually go much higher than that unless it's a week where I'm really invested in playing with the units a lot, so I just spend the Vizior to keep refilling the orbs because there are some weeks where I just want to like test the hell out of a new unit and arena is a great place to do that at least from a pvp sense uh, obviously the maps are different and whatnot but um yeah so that's it in a nutshell hopefully you guys enjoyed this again it's really just an opportunity for me to kind of give some credence to what I talk about if you guys have any questions on, on my experience with the game how I've gone to this point uh pitfalls to avoid traps because obviously there's things I would have done different yeah feel free to drop some comments ask questions but in the meantime that's about it I'm, I'm waiting eagerly for the two new units to release this week I think Garville in particular. It's going to be amazing to review and that's about it, but I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks again for watching and look forward to doing more content for you all.